After taking that hard hit in the Bengals versus Bills game, it was life-saving measures that restored Hamlin's heartbeat right on the field. Fox 43's Sire Williams is in Lower Allen Township to tell us about this scenario and how it impacts athletes around the world and what you can do to help. Good morning. So as of now, as you heard, Hamlin is in critical condition, but the life-saving measures that led up to that event, the crucial timing, the reaction is what is important and what a lot of coaches and athletes across the nation are facing. So right now I want to introduce you guys to Julie Walker. She's the founder of Peyton Walker's foundation and the mother of Peyton Walker, who tragically passed away in 2013 due to sudden cardiac arrest. Um, can I ask you, how did you react to the news of Damar Hamlin? Well, my initial reaction is, oh my gosh, his mom. It just really went to what is she feeling and going through at this moment and then thinking about all of his teammates and everybody that witnessed this because this definitely has a huge ripple effect on everyone who witnesses cardiac arrest. So I also knew this is an opportunity. People are really dialed in. We have to jump on this and really work to educate the community so they understand why did this work for him and what can we do better in our own community to save lives. Of course. So tell me about the Peyton Walker Foundation and how coaches and athletes are getting the resources they need to do those life-saving measures. So we provide a number of services for the community. We do CPR demonstrations. We donate AEDs all throughout central Pennsylvania. And AEDs are a critical component of saving a life when someone's in cardiac arrest. We saw how that life-saving shock was delivered and restored his heart rhythm right on the field. So we want to make sure that anywhere kids play and practice sports, we've got AEDs available, that there's a cardiac emergency response plan in place. People know how to do CPR. So please use the Peyton Walker Foundation as a tremendous resource to help coaches, athletes, parents through this process. And then my last question is how common is this? I know that it's affected your life very right. much. So. I mean, since we started Peyton Walker Foundation, we've learned sudden cardiac arrest is the number one killer of student athletes in our country. And let that sink in. That It's huge. We've got every hour, every day, we're losing a child to sudden cardiac arrest arrest. It's the leading cause of death on school campuses. So this is a health epidemic that is really underreported. Um, now that we've got everyone's attention, we really want to take the opportunity to educate everyone. So it, it is definitely a health issue we need to pay attention to. Of course. Well, speaking of educating everyone, I want to bring in um, Bill. He is the uh, board member here at Peyton Walker Foundation. Can you show me how yes. to correctly perform CPR? So when you see someone suddenly collapse, or come across someone who's unresponsive, we want to check them. Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? We want to make sure that there's no sign of life. So go ahead and do that real quick. Yep. And then when there's no sign of life, you're just going to move the shirt up off and now center of the chest with the heel of your hand. All right. Yep. So one on top. Yeah. Interlock your fingers. Okay. Get your shoulders squared out over your hands. All right. And push hard and fast. We're trying to push the rate of 100 to 120 beats a minute. That's perfect right there. The mannequin actually gives you feedback. Okay. Um, also, we want to call 911 right away and get an AED. So I'll call 911, get an AED started, and... So my question is, when do I breathe? breathe? Do I breathe during this? No, call? we don't do any rescue breathing. Okay. Um, so once the AED arrives, we go ahead and turn it on. Adult Do I keep patient. doing this while you the keep AD doing this until you child. get the second pad? Now, once the second pad's placed, we stop. Okay. And the AED will make a decision to shock or not shock the patient. All right. Do not touch. And the while this is all happening, you're calling 911. We've called 911. But see, we had the AED come instantly. This doesn't happen. Shock. Okay. We need to have AEDs in the home. Do not so now tell patient. this is the most critical part. Everyone when the clear. shock's being given, make sure no one's touching. So back Press up, the everyone shock clear, shock. and then we push the shock button. Shock delivered. Immediately after that shock being delivered, you're going to see this person come back to life or stay unresponsive. The AED will coach you through doing CPR as well. Okay. So you would get right back on if they didn't come back to life and continue with those compressions. Okay. Every minute that goes by that we don't do this, this person loses a 10% chance of coming back to life. All right. And you continue to do these compressions until when? Until EMS takes over. All right. Um, so push hard, push fast. Don't be afraid of noises you're going to hear. You will do internal damage to this person. Um, but do not be afraid of that. Okay, well, thank you so much for showing me thank this information. You. And again, these are the life-saving measures that uh, resuscitated uh, Damar Hamlin three times while on the field. So in Cumberland County, Sayre Williams, Fox 43 News.